Hello, we are from Denmark and we are standing here beside a Danish constructed glider. Now Dan Denmark is not a country which has developed very many types of aircraft. So this is one of very few gliders which has been developed in Denmark. Its, uh, its first flight is in 1953 and it's built as a glider for, for training uh, students. It's not have any very good uh, glide rate, it's less than 1 to 20, but it climbs actually very well. So uh, <clears throat> it's nice to fly, very harmonic. Uh, it flies actually a bit better than it looks like. There was built two of them and they both went to the Danish military, uh, which at that time had some uh, cadets uh, and clubs uh, related to the the Danish Air Force. And that's the reason why it has the color markings uh, from the Danish Air Force. Uh, when it came to us in the Danish Historical Gliding Club, it has been hanging in a military museum for 30 years. Now we had some other gliders uh, which also had been flying in the military uh, colors, so we changed out so that we got this glider and the agreement was that we should make it airworthy and have it look like it did most of its active time earlier. So this is why it looks, as I mentioned earlier, as it is today. Now we brought it here to the VDC because it's the first time we have brought it to a VDC. It was made airworthy again last year. That was the first flight for many years. And we were actually a little bit uh, excited about how we could fly, but we were surprised that it was flying better than we thought. And it also a robust glider, and it good for for training purpose. No doubt about that. Det var ikke at komme i tanke om. Så vi ikke har ellers her, at vi kunne vi kunne vi kunne nævne jo. Det var godt for the instructor. The instructor say 10 cm higher than the students, so the instructor can can see. Uh, in the front. Yeah. Yeah. It's very important. It, uh, it participated some years later in a German Idiotreff. Idiotreff. This is where they measure gliders up to each other, finding out how well are they flying. They are surprised it could thermal. It also got a nickname, Der Fliegende Bierstube, <laughs> while it has an armrest and there's so lots of place in the back seat. Posluši, današnji dan je neki posebnega, ker neki tega še v celju nismo videli. Prizdaj. Tako je, res je. Evo, ti si pripelala sem, da bi bo mi tole, ker tole po mojem se ne bo več ponovil, ker je res, res čudovito, ne da? Ja, enkrat na priložnosti. Pa, pa tam te vsem tem čuj starodobnikom, pa da vreme služi, pa da je to tako lepo, a ni res? Ja. Ja, tako, pa... Pa to je lajki, pa jaz še zdaj ne morem verjeti, tu se sprašujem, kakaj je to logistika, kdo to ureja, da tole vse takle lepo laufa, pazi, pa da ne pride nekjer do nobenega trčenja ali pa do kakaj stvari, a ne res, tako zdaj bova pa pogledala, kako bo tega dvigno tamle.
se v rok Marin? Moje ime je Pija in moje ime je Katarin. No, drugače sem pilot v aeroklubu Celja in učitelj letenja, že od leta 1989 in zgleda, da smo dobili novo članico v aeroklubu, ne? Pijo. Tanska šel, ne? Vročinska obremenitev je v zadnjih dneh ekstremna, kar pomeni za vse pilote še dodatno dveganje. Predvsem je navarnost toplotnega udara in piloti se morajo zavedeti tako zgodnih znakov toplotnega udara kot kasnih. Žeja je kasen znak. Predvsem morajo biti pozorni na prve znake, kot so kotoglavica, slabost, razbijanje srca in takrat so pravzaprav nesposobni za letenje in morajo prekiniti, čeprav je to njihova strast. V teh dneh je druga največja nevarnost dehidracije, predvsem se morajo opazovati, opazovati morajo koliko tekočine zavoživajo, namreč v teh razmerah lahko človek izloči do 16 litrov tekočine dnevno, upazujejo naj svojo urin, barvo urina, namreč barva meduze, no ljavkasto barvno urin je znak resne dehidracije, ki vodi do tudi resnih zapletov. Pri starostnikih z pridruženimi bolestni srca pomeni lahko vročinski odar smrtnost do 60%. Kljub omenjen tveganjo teče prireditev gladko. Zahvaljujem se vsem pilotom, ki poštevajo tudi naše dnevne svete. Hvala. Dzień dobry, jestem Mirosław Lewandowski z Polski. Latam na północnym zachodzie Polski w mieście Piła. Jestem właścicielem Foki 4, która zdobyła Mistrzostwo Świata w 1965 roku w Sousernie. Jeżdżę z tą Foką od kilku lat po Europie i odwiedzam różne ciekawe miejsca. Dzisiaj jestem w Sejle, w Celie. Bardzo ciekawe miejsce w Słowenii dla mnie i do mojej foki. Latałem kilka dni. To no jest może przerwa.